All right, well, it's been two months and one and a half days. Wait, it's been two months, yesterday and a half, since I broke my ankle. And you heard the story of that if you saw, what was it? Oh yeah, Colors Philosophy 2, you know, where I explained that, uh, that I was climbing up some rocks and, you know, a rock came loose and I fell back and landed on my foot and turned my ankle and snapped it and then, uh, you know, was, uh, was attacked by a mountain lion. And, you know, I beat it in the head and conked it silly. And anyway, so I took several days to get back to civilization, crawling until I was able to make a splint and a couple crutches out of, you know, branches. You, you, you saw the, the whole story. I told you all about it on, on that old video, the other video. So anyway, I'm back uh, hiking, walking. Let's just call it walking because I would hardly call this hiking exactly. I don't know. I don't know. For city people, I guess it's hiking. It's fairly flat ground. This is where I did one of my last Sasquatch videos. And came out here just to see... When I'm driving along beside the road, I see a lot of herbs that are coming into season. They can be used for things like arthritis. And my whole, basically from my knee down to my entire foot, is in a lot of straight to the bone pain because of disuse for the last couple months. And... Uh, so I don't know if any of these herbs that are used for arthritis will work for that. We've got creosote, although the only bushes that seem to be ripe for picking for use as, uh, as medicinal herbs tend to be the ones growing beside the road, so that might be what I pick. Uh, same with brittle bush. There's a lot of nice new brittle bush beside the roads. I'm not finding any out here right now. What else? We can use uh, yucca. There's a lot of different plants for that. I may just settle for maybe some brittle bush, some uh, creosote, and canyon bursage. And just experimenting. I think I'm just going to make, make some hot tea, pour it into a pan, and soak my foot in it to see if it helps with that deep pain and uh, I guess that's one of the benefits of being the Sasquatch medicine guy that I am the black helicopter I was trying to capture that through my viewfinder and wasn't looking with my eyes. I couldn't tell if that was Sheriff Joe's helicopter. I've been told he flies around in an unmarked black helicopter. I guess he likes to be scary and, you know, men in black or whatever. Oh, there they are. Note the chemtrails in the sky. Those hot air balloons are enjoying a nice chemtrail ride. If I can dig it out, I've scored with Canyon Bursage roots. <laughs> There's a lot of these around here. It's just a matter of finding some place where it's not too hard to get the roots. That's the trick. Well, I won't exactly say that I scored because these plants aren't really in the best season for gathering their roots or their leaves. But I've got a lot of other options and I'm gonna try several of them. Like, you know, the way I look at it, if R2-D2 could roll along 
through the Sand People territory on Tatooine or whatever planet that was, you know, and he did just fine with his little tiny wheels. I'll do all right with my Reebok combat boots. It's Friday, February 21st. So I had gone out, I don't know, a week or two ago, I don't even remember, and found some canyon ragweed root. And then a couple days ago, I went and gathered some uh, new creosote uh, leaves, some brittle bush leaves, some globe mellow, uh, including the leaves and the flowers, just take the whole herb. I actually learned that I could pull off the top part with the flowers and then strip, they call it garbling, garble the leaves from the plant. So uh, I don't know whether it's better to have the stem or not to have the stem. I know I want the leaves. So I gathered some of that stuff up. I also have some herbs that I gathered last year. I still have some cottonwood bark. I still have uh, some roots from the triangle leaf bursage. And a couple days ago, I had gone and had physical therapy on my ankle, and it was so brutal that time that all day that day I was in pain. I took my shoes and socks off and saw that my ankle had swelled up to almost twice the size of the other one. The next day, I felt no better. I was just walking around, limping around in agony. And so finally, what I decided to do, I decided to get the creosote that I'd gathered late March of last year, 2013, and make a foot bath out of it just to see what it would do. So I soaked my foot in this foot bath for almost an hour and then went to bed. When I got up in the morning, I felt almost no pain in my ankle and foot. In fact, all day I felt almost no pain. I was walking around, I was mainly limping because I had no well, the muscles in that ankle and foot still don't work, so I'm limping because the muscles literally won't hold me, you know, when I'm trying to roll off my big toe, you know, off the ball of my foot. So all day today I had no pain. Uh, tonight I've done some exercises with the big rubber band they give you to, you know, to work the muscles. And so now I have pain after doing those exercises. Tonight I'm going to try a foot bath out of canyon ragweed root, the, the canyon ragweed root that I gathered, whatever it was, a week or two ago. Um, and I'm going to try that tonight and just see what that does for me. So next night I tried canyon bursage or canyon ragweed roots and um, that didn't work as well. And it doesn't mean that it doesn't work as well. It could mean that it was too weak because I wasn't using any scientific measurements. Uh, so now tonight I'm going to try cottonwood bark that I gathered last year. So I'm just using myself as a guinea pig to give myself a taste of my own medicine experimentally just to see how different things work because having broken my ankle and destroyed the ligaments uh, connecting the ankle to the foot uh, and I mean I broke it. I mean I broke it in like, you know, broke it. <laughs> okay, bad. Okay. So having been not able to actually put any weight on that foot for about a month and a half, now nothing wants to work. The muscles don't work. I can't really hold, you know, if you stand on your tiptoes. I can do that with my left foot, but my right foot, there's no strength to do that. So that affects the way I walk, if you can call it walking. And uh, even, even my right knee hurts a lot because for that time I wasn't putting any pressure. Sure, I would bend it, but there was no weight put on it, so it's rebelling even. And then to make matters worse because of all the added strain on my left leg, then the muscles there hurt. But So this is a good opportunity for me to use myself as a guinea pig, as I said, just to experiment with some of my own medicines. Also, the time that you gather these things matters. Like right now is the time to gather a creosote or chaparral because it's flowering. 
And so this is when it's the most potent, and you just pull the, the, the leaves, the flowers, everything off the ends of the bush, and you throw that into uh, whatever. You just take it with you, dry it, but it's got to be dried well before you package it up. Uh, it's kind of, I'm almost too late to be gathering brittle bush just for the sake of its potency because I should have done that right before it flowered and the brittle bush plants are just flowering everywhere right now. The reason that this is pretty experimental is because I'm using uh, medicines, I'm using herbs that are useful for arthritis and stuff like that and it's not that I have arthritis but I think something that could work on arthritis probably may work well for my situation of you know everything the muscles the joints everything hurting on my you know on my broken foot so and as I said chaparral seems to have done the trick but I'm still experimenting so Cottonwood bark will be my experiment for tonight. Cheers. Hmm, this is different. So I noticed some uh, immediate pain relief last night from that foot bath, but not the kind of lasting relief I got from the chaparral. And that's okay, it doesn't surprise me because none of my books suggest that you use a decoction from the cottonwood tree bark as a foot bath. What they suggest is making, uh, is making a poultice from the leaves and applying that topically to relieve pain or drinking the decoction from the roots as a tea. So that's why I dipped some of that out last night and I got my my hand, actually I made this into iced tea and sweetened it with monk fruit uh, sweetener because it's a pretty bitter tonic, you know, but um, with monk fruit, you know, or, or some kind of an alternative sweetener like that, then that makes it a lot more tolerable. So you drink it and it can relieve pain uh, of all kinds, including arthritic pain, whether it's short term or long term. So yeah, cheers. So for tonight's experiment, I made a big old pitcher of brittle bush tea using whole leaves uh, from brittle bush plants. And instead of throwing the leaves away after I had let the tea steep, I used the leaves to wrap a, um, basically put them against my knee, my ankle, all the places that are hurting, and then wrapped a bandage over it to hold it all there. And now I'm going to go to sleep with the brittle bush leaves uh, wrapped onto, you know, onto the parts of my leg where there's a lot of pain and see what it feels like when I wake up. And in the meantime, of course, I'm drinking a nice cup of brittle bush tea before I go to bed with uh, stevia to give it a little sweetness. So I slept all night with that wrap around my knee and ankle and this morning I notice a huge difference, especially in my knee, which makes sense because that's where most of it was. And it's also interesting to note that the leaves I used, I had already steeped and made tea out of, and I'd steeped them for a half hour because I was trying to get as much medicine out of them into the tea as I could. And, uh, and they still seem to have made a huge difference. Uh, wrapped around my knee all night long uh, This morning for the first time in several days. I don't feel like I've got an arthritic knee <laughs> I know that some Native Americans used to just crush it up Green I assume and use it like a poultice to relieve pain You know applying it on the outside of the skin to wherever the pain was whether it's joint pains or muscle pains or whatever. And so if it worked that well 
and I had already steeped it for a half hour, then I'm sure fresh, it's gonna work a lot better. So my next experiment I hope to do tonight, again, this is not something recommended by any of my books, is purely experimental, it will be a foot bath made from brittle bush leaf tea. I'm gonna try it to see how that goes. I was just kind of having fun because right here by me, the city years ago planted all these eucalyptus trees, which are not indigenous to Arizona. They're indigenous to Australia, and there's several different species you'll see. And so they were planted a long time ago, so they're huge trees, full adult trees. And the leaves have a tendency to hang down from the trees, so you can just reach up and cut them off or pull them off. These are drying right now. And I got them because, you know, these trees are everywhere all over Phoenix. And uh, eucalyptus leaves and oil ha have so many medicinal uses, you know, for controlling diabetes, for pain relief of arthritis, etc., etc. And I decided to make something really simple, <clears throat> which was an infusion of the leaves uh, that I made as a mouthwash because it, uh, it's antiseptic, it kills germs and bacteria, it kills bad breath. I've even read that it can be used to diminish or eliminate snoring. Uh, I don't know whether it's good enough to gargle it or if you have to drink some of it. You see cautions when you read about eucalyptus that you shouldn't drink it, it's got a toxin in it, and me using myself as the guinea pig because I read other articles that say drinking the tea will, you know, can help with this ailment or that ailment. What I've discovered for myself is that it's fine in small quantities. Uh, if there's a toxin in it, then that would mean don't drink very much of it. So what I've been doing, I've, I've used it, uh, like I said, mouthwash, gargle, I've drank a little bit of it. I've used it to wash my hands. Uh, it just has multi-uses because it's antiseptic. It kills germs, whatever, etc. So I've been using it to brush my teeth instead of toothpaste. I mean, how well this works, you know, I'm, I'm experimenting with myself. If I end up dying, then I'll let you know, whoops, that didn't work from the grave, I guess. In the meantime, I'm making my foot bath out of brittle bush leaves, and I'm going to find out how that works, if that's uh, really effective. Uh, use that tonight, and I'll let you know if it was awesome or wasn't. Well, that brittle bush concoction worked really well, and uh, I soaked my foot in it for maybe 45 minutes. Uh, and then I took the leaves and uh, wrapped them onto my foot and onto my knee and slept that way. And these are the leaves that I'd already used to make the infusion with and I just left them all in there so they could steep in the foot bath while I was using the foot bath just so I could get the most out of it. When I talk about making a poultice from leaves that's not what I'm talking about. What I mean is completely blending up those leaves into a, a mush like I did with the cottonwood leaves in a previous video. So you could probably even do that with, uh, with a juicer. I don't know until I try it. I plan to try it. But I'm going to stop the video here because if I don't finish this video and get it uploaded, nobody but me benefits from any of this. So what I will say is that the brittle bush leaves in the foot bath were good. Were very good and I notice a big difference today from that. My foot is not aching the way it has been on days where I don't do anything or when I use something that's less effective. Now there are so many types of folk remedies and, and uh, indigenous medicines out there. You can even take horseradish roots and make those into an herbal remedy for pain. And you can buy them from a supermarket or grow them in your garden. I don't know why you'd buy them and use them, except that maybe it's just more natural and probably safe than painkillers that you would buy that are made in a factory. But wherever you live, you've got a lot of other options. If you live in a different region than I do, 
all of the things I've been experimenting with for this video were all from the lower Sonoran region. Uh, and you, if you live somewhere else, will have a whole lot of other options where you live. And it might be an interesting experiment for you to find out what those things are and do your own video on your own herbal remedies for pain if you're suffering from a lot of pain. Me, you know, I know I'm getting older, so I know I need to, uh, to learn as much as I can. If I can break my ankle and then after a month and a half of not being able to use it and put any pressure on it, like everything is messed up. The muscles, the, the ligaments, the tendons, you know, and my knee and whatever. This is not, bode, it does not bode well for getting older. All right, so it's a good idea to know these things. So you, like I said, please experiment in your area if you have different plants that grow that are also known to be used to relieve pain for things like arthritis or, or uh, you know, muscle pains and joint pains and whatever. So uh, that's it. This is not all. There are lots more plants I can experiment with, but I want to get this video to you so you can benefit as much as I can. Have fun. Also, all of these things are not recommended for people who are pregnant. Pretty much nothing is. If you're pregnant, you're out of luck, sorry. Uh, no medications, no, no herbal remedies are recommended. Just experience pain. You are Smile on a tormented face